What's going on world? It's your boy Alex Acosta and I'm back with another fun, quick, and easy tutorial inside of Vegas. And obviously you see the podcast mic in front of me and why that is you ask is because today I'm hoping to give you some dope tips and tricks and how to make your shoot a little bit more entertaining. Um, I do a lot of multi-cam shoots for podcasts, but every now and then I do get a request for a single cam. So how do we keep the audience engaged with a single cam shoot? Let's jump in and find out. All right, so let's drag the clip into the timeline. And as you see, it's a single video clip and single audio. After assuming you watch the, the podcast back, of course you gotta make some cuts. So you're gonna have a bunch of slices and dices in between. Let's just assume this is what it looks like once your final was done. And how do we add some life into it from here? Let's create a blank event. And the key to this one is gonna be our adjustment event. The adjustment is gonna be where the magic happens here. I'm gonna add one more slice just to make this a little little shorter right here. But let's assume from here, you wanna keep this angle right here wide. And then once you get to this particular shot that is highlighted, you want this to be a tighter shot. So what we're gonna do here is go from here and we're just gonna punch in a little. Let's say we're gonna punch in to about right there. Let's adjust for some headroom. And we know that when we go from this clip now, our wide is the very next clip should go to a tight. Bam. So let's just say that that was from there. And for the sake of it, let's actually just bring this back right here. And we know that once this clip is done, it goes back to the wide, right? So let's add another slice. And let's just assume for the next three or four slices, depending the point that was made, you want to do a zoom in. I mean, you want to do the, the tight shot as you, as you did there. All you got to do is copy and paste. So this is what makes it easier on these adjustment events. So that's uh, just for the moment, we know we copied three in a row. So what we expect three in a row, Y tight, Y tight, Y tight. Tight, let's go back to wide. And it repeats itself, I'll just go through one more. There you go. And bam. All right, so we got the basics out the way. Let's get a little bit more detailed. Let's assume that you wanna start from a wide shot and as she's talking, you wanna slowly zoom in. Let's make that happen. Let's go create another adjustment event right here and stretch this out to the duration of the clip. And let's go to our aspects and let's create some keyframe. I'm gonna show you how to make this keyframe. Let's uh, take this cursor all the way to the end and we wanna slowly punch in, let's say about right there. I'm gonna adjust a little higher because I know um, give a little bit more headroom, but we created that keyframe right there. Now, if I go back to the beginning of this clip, which I am right now, and I hit play, do you see it slowly punching in? And again, that's really, 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 really slow. You don't wanna super zoom in fast, or if you did, let's actually take that and go back. Actually, let me just assume you do wanna go faster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch in, same thing, leave the cursor exactly what it is over here, because that's the key part of it. And let's go back to it right here. Let's zoom, it's gonna go faster now. And you see the, the, the slow creeping as it goes. And the same goes for the opposite. So let's just delete this keyframe. And let's go um, from here, from the beginning of the keyframe, you start on your punching. So let's assume that's where I wanted to start right here. What I do is take the cursor, go back to the end and tell, the, tell it where do I want it to end once I want it to stop. And I'm gonna adjust it so we still in frame. And here we go. Just start from here and there you go and slowly zoom out. So the same is true either way if you want to zoom in or zoom out. All right, so now we're going to jump into the timeline of how I actually made it look and how I actually made it work. You learned a little bit of how to do some tights for some wides and how to do some zoom ins and zoom outs. But again, let's look at it in real time how I would edit this. And here is the timeline. And again, do not be intimidated by what you see here. You see at the moment, it is still a single camera source and still single audio source. All I did was add some instrumental and I added some sound effects. Of course, here you see some PG uh, pictures and some text and some graphics added on top of it. But um, let me show you a little bit of how I did it. And on this opening clip, it's gonna be a zoom in. So as soon as I hit play, you're just gonna see a little zoom in coming. You slowly punching in. And I added a graphic with her name and her Instagram. All right, but right here is what I have in as a, a pop-up bubble. So I also added some text of the question and I added a pop-up bubble. But as you see, it goes from this zoom in wide, 
back to the normal. I mean, sorry, zoom in back to a Y. So as you see, you play with this effect as much as you want to, but the best thing about it and the easiest thing about it, instead of you doing this manually every single clip, you can just copy and paste. And that's what makes this event so easy to use and why I use it so much. Instead of me doing another adjustment event here or even eventing from here, I already know that this is a tight shot. So let's say from here from wide to a tight. If I wanna keep repeating that, all I have to do is copy and paste. And I know, and stretch it out to the duration of that clip. And from here, bam. And then what is it gonna do the next clip? Back to a wide. So this is why I love the adjustment layer so much, this adjustment event, because I can do that much more and I don't have to do it to each individual clip. I can do it to the clips that I want to and I can even let it carry over to all different clips. So if I wanted this clip just to slightly come over and this is where I wanted to jump in, you see how I pushed in and it'll stay through here. So use this to your advantage, use this as your friend. And also remember, you can add a bunch of things to this. You can also add color correction. You can add different things on top of this one of event. But in particular, I'm only using this as zoom in, zoom outs, um, tight shots far away. And overall, this is what making a single camera use for a podcast that much more entertaining because it's not just one thing you're looking at, not one static shot. We're here looking at multiple things going on as she's talking. Now that, my friends, is how you take a single adjustment of Venice out of Vegas and you make a single cam shoot or a multi-cam shoot that much higher in production value. Hope everybody learned something today. Have a good one. What Flow Rider song can you recite word for word? All of them. It's only been on teen years. <laughs> That's when I told her her legs on my shoulder. I knew I was over. That Henny and Cola got me like a soldier. She ready for Rover. I couldn't control her. So lucky on me. I was just like a mm, mm. apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur. Let's go. Biggest lesson learned as an artist from dropping your single, Sugar Daddy. 